stay tuned as we build and review this Marvel Legends Conchu Builder Figure. Pow, and welcome back to the channel, Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And remember now you can hit that join button and become a channel member as well. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. Today, we have came to the end of yet another wave of Marvel Legends. This time round, it was the Disney Plus Conchu Builder figure wave. And as you can see in front of me, we have all of the pieces we need to build the Konshu Builder figure. And I don't know about you, but this was definitely my most anticipated in the wave. So happy to be here to build him. But if you, like me, need all of the pieces to build Konshu, you will need six of the seven figures in this Builder figure wave. So, a quick recap you will need Jimmy Woo, classic Loki. Zombie Scarlet Witch, He Who Remains, Howard the Duck, and Red Skull. You won't need the Iron Man because he has no Builder Figure piece. So six figures gets you Conchu, and as I said, this guy looks epic. So it should be nice and simple here. I've got a head, two legs, a hand, and a staff. But I'm going to do this off camera so I don't make a fool out of myself. I'll be back. And I'm back, and here he is all built up, and he is very impressive. I've had to step back with my camera just to fit this guy in frame. So to give you a sense of scale straight away, here we have the tape measure, and you can see he himself stands at just under nine inches tall, and then his crescent moon staff nearly tips the 11 inch mark. Again, just under. But to remind you, this is of course Konchu, the ancient god of the moon, worshipped by the Egyptian people, protector of travellers by the night, but he has to pick an avatar to do his bidding on earth. The fist of Konchu, aka Moon Knight. So here we have both of the Moon Knight figures that came in the previous Disney Plus wave to give you a further sense of scale to see how tall and imposing this builder figure is in comparison to a regular size Marvel legend. So uh, yeah, this guy is undoubtedly impressive. And to be fair, this is the first time we have ever gotten a Conchu figure, whether it be live action or comic. So I have a feeling people are gonna be wanting this guy to fudge into a comic display. And that's fair game because his character design is pretty similar from the comic page to live action and now in plastic. I think they've done a great job. And, and yeah, these three together have to be displayed in prime place. So let's zoom in and take a further look. So let's start up top with this impressive head sculpt. It's got this giant bony beak that has some really nice texture and paint detail in there. So it definitely looks like a skeleton, like a bone. Uh, and it's yeah, just so gritty and dirty. There's a hollowness to the eyes. There's the gap there for the nose. And yeah, just really gritty and bony. It gets a little bit more clear up to the peak here. But uh, yeah, it's really impressive and imposing. Now that will come off, of course, um, to that sort of bony birdy skull and reveals the neck piece, which is like a translucent purple which does shine in the light now in the show his head is like floating above the body now of course that would have been hard to replicate in plastic maybe they could have done some magnet things but we're talking super deluxe so not for marvel legends i think this is a great compromise to be fair and um, so yeah really good nicely done so that goes on there and it gives you more range than i expect as well as in the head will look down a little bit looks up a little bit as well and then of course you've got side to side but there is no articulation on the neck so it's just whatever movement you get on the ball is what you get for the head. But uh, he has got a bit of an ab crunch as well. So you can get him looking down, which I think is important when he's talking to his avatar. So that's pretty good. So uh, yeah, articulation on the head is decent considering he's got a big bony beak. Uh, the neck's really nicely done. And then all the textures and detail on the actual figure are nice too. So he's got this big overlay coat. Now the coat's got some nice details with these wraps and stuff all the way down here with some breaks in the coat. It doesn't go to the floor. It literally sits just above the ankle. Uh, and the figure is pretty stable. You don't need it to balance. He's pretty stable on his two feet anyway. Uh, so that's all one sort of solid beige piece. It would have been nice to have some dark wash on here to bring out the nice sculpted detail. But there is a little bit of detail on the chest here. You can see the Crescent Moon logo with some wraps over it. You can see some armor as well up top there uh, with the sort of um, metal 
uh, collar, if you will, that sort of gold bronzish color, uh, a chrome belt piece. Uh, you've got the diaphragm cut there, and that's where you're going to get your rotation for the sort of higher than the waist. So that's on a ball joint. So as I said, you get more movement there than I expected, but that's where you get your rotation more importantly. Uh, this belt piece is a separate piece. As you can see, it has this sort of flap that flaps all the way down to the legs, uh, but it doesn't get in the way of articulation at all. And the whole body has this like nice sculpted texture of these wraps uh, all the way around, which is textured to touch as well. So you can actually see it. Uh, and yeah, just really nicely done. And to remind you people, this is double jointed pinless. This is a double jointed pinless builder figure. Look at this, look at this, look at that range for a builder figure. So, so good. Uh, and he also has the up and down hinge on the wrist, which is really important for holding his staff. So yeah, that range with a double jointed elbow, you've got the bicep swivel, the shoulders will still go all the way up as well. So yeah, great range here. Even down into the legs as well, you've got the thigh cut and uh, moving down to the double jointed pinless knees. So impressive for such a big figure. Look at that. So impressive. You've got the ankle pivot and rocket as you would expect as well. Uh, and le legs go out really far. Look at that. No problem. They go out that way as well. So yeah, have no uh, um, hesitation in getting this guy into a more sort of fighting dynamic pose if you wanted him on the shelf that way. But uh, yeah, all the detail uh, is, there's only like little splodges of this brown sort of dirtiness to it, but there's enough there where it stands out as well. But I really like the bone texture and color. Uh, that definitely looks like a skeleton of a, of a bird of some kind, doesn't it? I'm not too sure on the creature. But uh, yeah, he's pretty sturdy under his weight and just all in all people, very, very impressive. But he needs his staff. As you've already seen, the staff itself is about 11 inches in length. So stands taller than the actual figure, as it should do. And it's at the top is this crescent moon with this really nice sort of texture and detail to it. There is some sculpted elements with like a sort of goldish sort of dry brushing over it. So it sort of highlights some of the sculpted detail. Either way, it's subtle, but it definitely stands out when the light hits it. It glimmers a little bit, especially with the sort of black handle. So there's one side, spin it around to the other. Again, you can see some more sculpted details around this crescent moon which I think is very nicely done onto the hilt there as well uh, and then yeah this thing is massive like all the way down and then right at the end it's got some more detail if it will bloody focus there you go uh, just at the bottom but uh, it's absolutely beautiful, people, all the way up. And as I've already showed you, the gripping hand has an up and down hinge as well, which is perfect for holding the staff, so they took that into consideration. But all in all, people, for me, I just this need this guy to stand imposing on the shelf, like in the background somewhere, and this is undoubtedly going to stand out wherever you put him in the collection. Really impressive. And again, I wanted to demonstrate that even though he's really tall, you can obviously still get him looking down facing one of his avatars, talking to him for a picture or for a pose on a display. And it does look really nice set up like this with Steven looking up at him there. And as you've seen, the head comes off, so you can pop it onto other bodies if you wanted to. So here we have Conchu's head on Mr. Knight, and it pops on there, no problems at all. And the actual body can hold the weight of the head, depending on how you have it posed. So uh, yeah, that even bends and moves on the actual ball joint. So a lot of articulation on this, more than I expected. So if you wanted Conchu in sort of avatar mode, uh, all fighting up, you can like get him into these type of poses. Another quick example of getting Conchu into a more dynamic pose as he has really good articulation. And even though there's no sort of uh, butterfly joint, the arms still have a decent enough range where you can hold his staff with both hands in a more of a fighting stance so he can whack someone with his actual staff. So uh, yeah, very nicely done. This figure is impressive. And bringing back in both Mark and Steven, the two avatars of Conchu, or the one, shall we say, with split personalities, just to show you all three of them posed up on the shelf together. And what a great representation and addition to our Marvel Legends collection from that Disney Plus show. If you had asked me at the start of the year what three characters would I have wanted into Marvel Legends, I would have said Moon Knight, Mr. Knight, and Conchu. So it's so good that before the year has ended, we have all three of these in our collection. What a solid representation of that show but of course there are more characters we can add so you let me know in the comments below what other character from the Moon Knight series would you like to see added to the Marvel Legends line also, if I'm being greedy, I would have also liked to see an unmasked head for Oscar Isaac of Stephen and Mark, just to have that option for a display. Next up, let's have a look at all three of the Marvel Legend Disney Plus Build-A-Figure Waves 
builder figures standing next to each other as we have the Watcher, Conchu, and the Infinity Ultron. Now, the Watcher is still just a tiny bit taller than Conchu, but his staff makes him look a little bit more imposing. But when I've got all three of these together, my mind just can't help but think how undersized I think Infinity Ultron is. Now, in the show, he messes around with his scale and Killmonger wears that outfit as well, so he is a shorter guy. But in my head, I just picture him being a little bit bigger and bulkier. So the way to fix that on a display is put him on a flight stand. Honestly, it makes a difference, especially when you pose him up with some other what if figures around him. Uh, and yeah, he stands out a little bit more and you don't know if the scale's a little bit off. For me anyway, I know not everyone agrees with that, but I would prefer him to be a little bit bigger. But I do really like the Watcher. He's a great representation of the Disney Plus what if show, but I do prefer my live action figures. I can't help it. And Conchu is the only live action figure we have gotten from the Disney Plus sort of builder figure era. And I hope that they continue in that direction. I want more live action figures, less what if figures, just personally. Next up, we have two comic Moon Knight figures to try and answer the question, can you use this Conchu in a regular comic Marvel Legends display? Now, of course, Disclaimer, there is no right or wrong answer. It is up to you and your own personal preferences. I'm just here to show you what they look like together on screen. And as you can tell, the color palette for Conchu is a little bit darker and grittier because he's a live action character compared to these two comic figures who are much more brighter white than that sort of off-white bonish color. But I think it can work. Conchu's character design, as I've already mentioned, in the comics and live action are very similar. Uh, so I think it can work for a comic display, absolutely. Just put him in the back there, looking imposing, hovering above these two in the background, and yeah, it can work. So uh, yeah, now you just have to pick what version of Moon Knight you want, and remember, this modernized version is getting a re-release. For absolutely no reason, here we have some more comic comparisons with Silver Surfer from the Galactus HasLab and Moonstone. I'm just curious, why is Khonshu not mad that Moonstone has a stone from the moon? Surely there's got to be some sort of crossover there. That was a joke before the comic historians jumped to the comment section. Here we have Conchu compared to a mix of random Phase 4 Disney Plus characters as we've gotten He Who Remains, who was in this Conchu Builder figure wave, She-Hulk, who even she looks pretty short compared to Conchu, and then we've got both of the Hawkeyes with Kate and Clint. Here we have a couple of other figures from this very Conchu Builder figure wave. Now you don't need to buy Iron Man, he has no Builder figure piece, but you will need to buy Scarlet Witch and Howard the Duck. And again, these all look tiny compared to Conchu. Here we have Conchu compared to Frogman, Tigra and White Rabbit. And last, but absolutely never least, here we have Captain Britain and Bomb, Bastic, Hank. <laughs> Final thoughts on this Marvel Legends Disney Plus Moon Knight Conchu build a figure. I think it's hard to argue that this isn't a great Marvel Legends build a figure. I think it's solid and a great representation of the character design that we've seen in live action during the Moon Knight show. A great centerpiece for the two Moon Knight figures we already have in our collection. It's all new. The scale is great. It is completely pinless, very aesthetically pleasing. And maybe if you squint your eyes, you can fudge it into a comic display as well. But I'm all for more live action Marvel legend figures from the MCU. I'd rather that than the what if, so I am always frustrated when they mix the waves like this, but when it's a solid builder figure, then I can't help it. Like, this is a great figure, definitely worth buying the other figures in the wave. Maybe not so much Howard the Duck, but I like Duck, so what can I say? You let me know what you think in the comments below. What other Moon Knight characters should they give us in figure form, or do you reckon we've got a pretty solid trio until they give us a second season, as I undoubtedly think we will? Always curious to hear your thoughts, and if you like Marvel Legends, then um, you're in the right place. Check out the videos tab, find the playlists, but most importantly, please, 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 hit that subscribe button. Hit all on the notification bell. Don't miss out on a video, and please, Hit that join button, become a channel member. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. You can follow me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And I'm on Twitter as well. Tweet me, don't be shy, at Dan Who Reviews. And as always, people, I will try and do a recap and ranking of this wave and the previous Disney Plus wave. There's just so many legends hitting at once. I've got to move on to the next one. But I do plan on getting back round to my recap and rankings. But I need some time to digest. We've had some weird waves, but some great figures. And it's going to be a hard top 10 list at the end of the year, I tell you that. But stick around. And as always, I will, of course, see you on the next one.